In my previous video series, I covered scratch building a mech from various found objects and casts of things like lighters and yogurt pots. Now, it's fair to say I've become a little bit obsessed because I really enjoyed doing that, so I want to have another go. So in this video, I'm going to build another mech. Uh, this time around, I'm thinking I'm going to do something a bit like the ATST from Star Wars, perhaps. Something with some quite long legs, like a sort of a drone-type device that might hunt people down in a dystopian future. And let's face it, there aren't any other types of future, are there? <laughs> Now, as I said, I really enjoyed building a mech previously, and it seemed like a lot of you have actually enjoyed watching that too, and a lot of people have got in touch with me to talk about it. One person emailed asking whether I'd considered using a mouse as a basis to a robot, um, and I hadn't actually thought of doing that, but I had seen various people post robots and spaceships and flying vehicles that they've made out of computer mice uh, in various Facebook groups I follow, and I thought that was a really, really good idea, so I decided to give it a go. Some gaming mice do look quite futuristic and do lend themselves to sort of robots and sort of spaceships and that sort of thing. So um, I decided to get one off eBay. This only cost a few pounds. But as you can see, this has got quite a lot of promising parts that could be used. The main piece I'm interested in is the sort of switch piece on top. So I'm just dismantling the mouse to get that out. Now that almost reminds me of the uh, crest of the Alien Queen from Aliens. Um, it's got that sort of shape to it, I think. So I think that's got some potential to be a sort of a headpiece of some sort. Now I need a few more shapes beyond that, so what I've also got is a bag of Christmas baubles, uh, which we bought for, uh, for Christmas to make some custom decorations, and we never quite got around to using them. But it's actually really, really useful to have some basic shapes available, um, spheres and squares and things like that. Now you get quite a lot of these for a few pounds, so they're very cheap, um, so you can use lots and lots of them if you need to, and if you screw something up, well that's fine too. So I'm thinking these two pieces can go together like this, perhaps. So I'm just gluing the two pieces together and as you can see I've drawn a cross at the front just so I can actually align the pieces uh, correctly together. I've just done that by lying it down on the cutting mat which has got a grid on it and using a marker to draw that on. One thing I find really difficult when doing this sort of thing is making sure that things are lined up correctly. It's quite easy to glue everything together and then realise you've got things a bit skew with. So it's worth taking your time and giving yourself some markers just to make sure that you get that right. And in order to make sure that the two pieces adhere, I'm just filing down the surface of the bauble there a bit, just to give the glue something to grip to. For anyone wondering, I'm using super glue activator here. That's what I'm spraying onto the uh, join. Uh, just something that makes a super glue set really, really quickly, and it's really, really useful. So what I'm thinking of here is that the round section could have some other pieces that could slide around it, maybe a bit like the head of BB-8 from The Force Awakens. So what I'm going to do is cut out some round panels that can then sit on the surface of the round portion of the head. These could have arms or guns or things like that attached to them. And it's nice and easy just to cut these down with a Dremel. So I also need to make some sort of face or focus point for this robot. So what I'm thinking of doing is using this piece that I've got from a USB thumb drive. So I think something like that looks pretty good. So the first step is I'm going to glue this to a piece of styrene plastic and cut around it. Um, that way I've got something to actually glue on some maybe some lens pieces or things like that. So um, I'm thinking that the robot can have some sort of visual sensors down the front of this. I think I'll probably want to put some LEDs in here so there's some interactive lights going on. So I need to blend these two shapes together. So what I'm going to do is cut around um, some spare baubles here to get the correct curve. And I'm going to use some pieces of styrene plastic to make some sides to this portion of the model.
I'm also going to use some more pieces from the model kit that I used in my previous mech build just to add some um, kit bash detail onto the sides. So this is what I've come up with. And I've sort of skipped ahead slightly here in that I've filled in some of the sections which adjoin the round portion of the head with milliput and sanded all that down smooth. What I also want to do is have some mechanical detail underneath the crest of the head. So what I've got here is the underside of the vehicle that I actually used in my previous mech build. I saved this specifically for this project so I figured it could be a sort of a framework on which I could attach additional mechanical pieces. Now for the previous project I made these small scale canisters and I think they're always quite a good thing to add because they're recognisable as a real world piece of uh, equipment um, and sort of imply that there might be some sort of mechanics or engines going on underneath the uh, hood as it were. So um, adding these always adds a certain something I think. So this is what I've come up with. There's a sort of engine unit on top which is actually a um, lead a piece of machinery I think I bought from a model sailing ship company. Um, there's also various other bits and pieces that I've saved. The pipework is just some bendable aluminium wire that I also bought from my previous project. But I think that looks quite nice as a piece of machinery which implies some sort of um, mechanisms going on within the robot. So what I now need to do is come up with some sort of neck from which the uh, head part can go on to attach to the rest of the robot. And this piece I've had for some time, um, I got it from the inside of an old VHS machine. Um, they're always quite useful for pulling apart to find mechanical pieces. But I really like the look of this and I've been sort of holding on to it for uh, quite a while to find the right project to use it on. It's relatively small as you can see but I thought it would be perfect here to act as a sort of a, um, a junction I suppose or a connection that could go from a thin neck to the uh, head of the robot. So what I'm going to do here is actually make a mould of this so I can cast up multiple copies uh, should I need to. Now if, if you've seen my videos before I'm sure you've seen me do this a million times but it's a case of um, gluing the piece to a piece of foam board then hot gluing a surround around it to contain the silicon. I can then pour my silicon into the enclosure and allow that to dry. And leaving that overnight, I've now got a completed mould. So that's what that looks like with the uh, piece removed. And here's a uh, black polyurethane resin cast from the mould. So I'm just drilling a hole through that so I can put a piece of brass rod through it. And that's how that looks. So there's the basic principle as I showed you earlier. I figured these plates could slide around the outside of the round section of the robot and then allow it to move in sort of any orientation that it needs to. I've also got these smaller resin casts that I've used for various pieces in the past as well. And I think they work quite nicely as some further visual detail. That bit's a little bit long there, so I'm just cutting down the brass rod to a shorter size. There we go, I think that looks pretty good. Um, the round piece on the end there is actually two casts of a deodorant bottle, which I also used in my previous mech build. I think these things work really, really well as ball joints for attaching legs and limbs, that sort of thing. So I think that makes sense to have them here. Uh, for this robot, I guess it's not gonna have an actual torso. It's gonna be more like a sort of a ATST walker from the Star Wars films. So it's not gonna be a body as such, it's just gonna be a head and a set of legs with some guns attached on the underside. My main idea for this is that it could be some form of scout which patrols uh, bogs or hard to traverse terrain. So I'm figuring that it will have very long legs so it can walk through sort of water and that sort of thing while sort of tracking its prey. So that's the idea. So to that end I'm now turning my attention to actually doing the legs and I'm figuring that these side pieces from the mouse would be great as sort of thighs. So what I'm doing is cutting those away from the main body of the mouse.
and you can sort of see how they would sit. So what I'm going to do is use some additional brass rod here and I'm actually threading through some electrical wiring here so that I can actually pass some power up to the main body and have some LED lights. What I'm also using is some additional resin casts from again from my previous mech build. I've also cut some pieces of acrylic plastic to size just to allow me to um, attach the brass rod to those pieces. So that's the sort of basic idea of how the mech's going to um, come together. Uh, what I now need to do is to add some um, long pieces of brass which will form the main legs. I'm also thinking about what to use for the eyes of this uh, piece. And what I've actually come up with is to use the piece of the mouse which um, would normally have the laser sensor on the underside. So if you look at any optical mouse it's got this sort of arrangement on it. And actually I'm thinking this is going to look quite nice if I shine some LEDs through it. Now obviously the whole thing is going to glow if I just put an LED on the back. So what I'm going to do here is take some aluminium tape and mask off certain sections of the piece. That way if I leave a gap in the centre the LED will only shine through the areas where I haven't added aluminium tape. So I'm just cutting that down to size. And if I now shine an LED through it, um, I don't know how obvious that is on the video, but hopefully you get the basic idea. So this is where I've got to so far. Hopefully you can see the basic idea of how this is going to go. I've cut a base out of just some spare plywood and I've made a foot for the piece here um, out of some additional cast resin pieces and also some pieces from some old VHS tapes. I only need one foot as the other foot's actually going to be embedded in resin. On my previous model I did a very very basic diorama base um, just to try and imply some scale to the to the mech itself. I want to go a little bit further here. I've been watching quite a few YouTube videos from people who make dioramas and I really like the stuff that they do. So I want to put quite a lot of effort into the base of the model here as well. So my thinking here is that one leg can be uh, embedded in a bog so you won't actually see uh, the foot. The other one will be standing up on the ground so that one will be visible. What I've also made is some additional pieces here and some guns and some sort of a camera set up. So they just attach onto the model like that. So as you can see, I've got a few guns here. And these again, mostly made from brass tubing. I've also used some internal uh, components from the mouse itself. So in the case of this uh, camera arrangement here, the sort of main camera um, thing there is actually the uh, sensor which would pick up the light from the uh, LED in the mouse. The thing on the side of it is actually one of the switches uh, from the mouse and the things on the end of the brass tube are also additional switches. I've also used some connectors here for this gun and a few other bits and pieces I had lying about. The main gun here is again some brass tubing and also some pieces from VHS tapes as well. So that's most of the construction out of the way. In the next part of the video I'm going to look at painting the robot up and then adding some diorama detail to the base. Um, I'll save that for the next part of the video so in the meantime thanks very much for watching and I'll see you next time. Thanks very much for watching. I'll be posting more videos on this project and others, so if you'd like to keep up with what's going on, please do subscribe. Alternatively, you can visit my website, which is www.thedarkpower.com, or you can find me on Facebook, just search for The Dark Power.